I made a new crosscut sled. It has an extension fence for repetitive cuts on long stock, an adjustable fence for angled cuts, and it also can cut longer bevels like for box parts. The first step that I'm going to do is to make the fences. I know that I want them to be about three and three eighths tall. So I will rip them a little bit wider than that so that I can trim it after the glue dries. I got that measurement from the stuff that I'm going to use. This is the only thing for my old sled that I'm going to keep. But what's really cool about it is that it's totally adjustable for different height fences. So I have two pieces for the front fence and two pieces for the fence for the extension and the back fence. But I'm going to glue them up at the same time using a level clamp to them to make sure that they're completely straight and flat. This is the piece that's left over from cutting the fence and I'm going to use that as the base. So I followed my plans that I have on my website and I drew out some lines to cut away at the excess to just like get rid of a little bit of the weight. Now the reason why I'm actually making this sled a lot narrower than my last one is because I don't plan on using this sled for cross cutting wide panels because I just got a new toy. <laughs> so I'm going to primarily use a track saw as a way to cross cut wide boards. And since I got a new toy, that's what I'm actually going to use to cut off all these excess parts on the base. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get some dust collection for this. That definitely took a ton of weight out of this base. Next up, I wanna put in the dados for the T-tracks that are going to hold the hole downs. And in my last crosscut sled video, I used my table saw and did multiple passes, totally regretted that decision and said in my next crosscut sled that I would use a router, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my trim router with this router edge guide that I made. And the only caveat with this router edge guide is that you always have to mark the center of where you want to cut. So I had to mark out where I wanted all the tracks to go. Can you see that? And then I had to mark in the center of all those places where I want the tracks so that I can line up the edge guy. Next up is the runner. And I've had luck in the past using this HDPE material. It's like a plastic, you can use extra cutting board material and stuff like that. The reason why I like using this is because it's super stable and it won't expand or contract with the seasons. I'll just measure the miter slot here and set the fence to that width. Now the key to these holes is to drill the hole wide enough that the screw totally fits through the hole. Because if the hole is smaller than the screw and you start screwing it into the base, the plastic is actually going to expand out this way and then these won't fit into your miter slot anymore. Now I'll just use a countersink fit on all these holes. Time to attach the guides onto the base. So when I marked out everything before, I made sure that the center of this front portion here is in line with the blade and these T-track slots are not going to interfere with the miter track slot. So I'm going to align that front portion with the blade so that it's in the center of over here. And I'll adjust the fence just to reference as I'm temporarily attaching the guides. So I'm going to put some washers into here. This will lift up the guides so that it touches the bottom of the sled. I just noticed I actually had to cut two of these because this material wasn't long enough, but if you get material that's long enough, you won't have to cut two. 
Now I'll use some double-sided tape on here. Bring that sled back. I'll butt it up against the fence at the front here. Let's pre-drill a little bit into that plywood. And lock it down with screws. I'm not gonna over tighten here. I'll just cut this flush first. Now I'll cut the T-track to size. The T-tracks come with screws, but they're too long to go into here because of the depth of the dado. So I'm just going to cut them down before installing them. Now the T-tracks are in place and I'll use a VIX bit to pre-drill into the holes. I'm actually also going to put in the T-tracks with some five minute epoxy, just to give it some more holding power because these are kind of really small. And the screws are really just there to hold down while the epoxy dries. While that epoxy sets up, I could unclamp the fences. I added just a few more clamps while you guys weren't looking. All right, I'm gonna go trim these up at the table saw. Using that same three quarter inch router bit from before, I'm going to make the tracks in the top for the T-track and I'll just roughly center it. Now I can install the T-track in the fence. See how this piece juts out a little bit and it will help with alignment into the fence, into the main fence. Next I'll cut the extension base to size and I can use the long part of the main base to set the fence for that. Now I need a way to connect the extension to the main part of the sled. And I thought of a few ways to do this. I thought maybe to use uh, dowels or something like that. If I had a biscuit joiner, I would probably use that. But instead I'm going to use uh, this slot cutting bit on my router to create slots on both parts. And then I'm going to make my own biscuit sort of things. Now when I'm making the matching slot, I just want to make sure that I'm referencing like the same surface. So the top and the top, that way they'll be even. And I'll do the same thing for the fence pieces. All right, maybe I'll get lucky in here, find some material. Fits. Oh, nice. Okay. That's a perfect fit. All right, so I don't have to mill anything up for this. Ooh, I just have to uh, cut it to size. Awesome. And now I'll just glue the splines into place on the extension part of the fence, not the main part. Not gonna use a lot of glue here because I really don't want to squeeze out. The pieces now fit together and align really well, but I'm going to need a way to lock them into place when I'm actually using it. I thought maybe I would use this steel bar stock as some sort of lock, uh, but I think that this piece of oak is going to be strong enough, so I'm gonna go cut this up. Now I will attach these onto the extension piece. Maybe I'll use some glue. Yeah, I'll use some CA glue. I actually considered making another groove in the, in the fence pieces so that these would lock into them, but I'm not really sure if it's necessary. So I'm just gonna use some CA glue and screws.
Now I'll make sure that this is on a flat surface here to make sure that the front is gonna be completely level. And I'll take my level again. I'll put it on the bottom to make sure that that bottom is completely flat and level. I'm going to clamp it. To make the locking mechanism, I'm going to use these threaded inserts. I'm going to be using these knobs to lock it in place, so I'm just going to eyeball where they'll go to make sure that they're not going to bump into each other. And I'll drill straight through these oak boards and the fence using a stop collar at the correct depth that I want. I'll drop some CA glue in place. Not actually sure if it's necessary. And I'll use a bolt to get the threaded insert into place. I'm adding a chamfer to the bottom front of the fences, and this is going to collect dust and will keep my cuts more accurate. And I'll add a round over to all the edges that I'm going to touch with my hands, so it feels nice. I'll put the back fence on first, and this doesn't need to be really square or anything. This is just holding the two halves of the sled together, just keeping it a bit more stable. Now I want to attach the front fence, but I want to attach it while it's connected to the extension. That way, when I'm setting it for square, the whole front fence is going to be set for square. So I'll lock it into place and I'll clamp a level to the front of it so that it stays completely straight while I'm attaching it. I'll put the extension base into place. Since there's only one screw in place, the fence can pivot so you can square it up to the cut line that you already made. Once I'm happy with the position, I'll clamp it down into place on the other side. I changed my mind how I want to square up the fence. So there was just too much deflection in this center area when I was trying to do a test cut and it wouldn't get me give me an accurate reading because when I was pushing along here, there was too much bend because these points are far away from each other and there's also this joint here and the fence being, the, the level being in the way just was not a good idea. So I'm going to take off the extension portion and I'm just going to square up the main portion of the sled first and then I'll attach the extension piece using the level clamped to the whole fence and then hopefully that will keep it nice and square. All right, looks like it's square. So I'll lock it down, avoiding the holes here so that I don't run into that. In the past, I've used the five cut method to calibrate my fence and make sure that it's square, but I think I'm actually just going to cut this long piece of plywood and check it with a square. If it looks square, I'll just lock it down. That is square enough for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock down the rest of the fence. Now I'll put on the extension base and the extension fence and I'll lock it down. How cool is that? So I'm gonna test for a square with this long piece of plywood. Let's see. Looks good to me. I'm so happy about this. 
All right, next step is to cut the bevel. The reason why I only use one miter track on the bottom of the sled was so that I can switch it to the other miter slot and I can cut bevels on this end. First, I'm going to raise the blade and set it to 45. Just lower the blade a bit. Now I'll just cut into the side of the fence. Now I'll make the jig that's going to go in these two T-slots over here. And this is going to be an adjustable fence so you can cut any angle you want. So this fence can now be set to any angle that you need. My most commonly used angles are 45 and 30, so I'm going to cut a 45 on one end and a 30 on the other end. But you can actually cut four corners of this if you flip it upside down and you can use all four corners for the common angles that you normally use, or you can just set it as you need it. So I'm going to set this by using a triangle. Once it's set, I'll lock it down and cut off the end. And what's cool about this is that once you cut the angle one time, you can use that as a reference for where to set it for the next time. So all you would have to do is line up that 45 degree cut or whatever angle cut that you will need against the blade and then lock it down and you have the correct angle for your project. I'll actually use it now to shape the blade guard that I'm going to put at the back of the fence. I just wanna make it a nicer shape, so I'll clamp it down here and make some cuts. Awesome. So super excited about this. The first feature that I'm going to test out is the extension fence. So the reason for the extension fence is to make repetitive cuts on long pieces easier. And it's pretty cool that this stop lock transitions back and forth from the extension to the main part of the sled because of the way that the T-track was installed. So this stop lock actually has a really cool feature that I wanna show you. So let's say I want to cut this board let's say to 34 inches, all right? So I'll set this 34 inches away from the kerf. And what you can actually do is push it out and then lock it into place. Double check that that measurement is correct before making any cuts, obviously. Adjust it slightly. Now it's set to cut the piece at 34 inches, but I first want to square up one end. So what I'll do is I'll flip the board onto its edge and slide it underneath the stop lock. After squaring up that end, I can now flip the board over and put it on its face, push it up against the stop lock, and now cut it to the measurement that I want. So this is really great for making multiple cuts so you don't have to move the stop. I really love this thing. And one of the best features is that there's zero deflection on it. I'm sure some of you have experience with stops like this one. Not so cool for accuracy. Speaking of accuracy, this stop also has a micro adjust feature. So let's say you cut your piece and it's slightly too long. So all you have to do is unscrew this little knob and adjust it ever so slightly to get the correct measurement. You can just guess the amount, use feeler gauges or paper, whatever works for you. Next, I'm gonna test out the bevel feature. So I would use this when making boxes, like wider pieces that need a 45 on the side of them. So first, I'll just cut this up into equal size pieces using the stop lock. Now I'll swap it over to the other miter slot and set the blade to 45. 
I'll line up the piece on the edge of the sled here and I'll adjust the stop locks so all the pieces are going to be the same. And cut all four pieces. Now I could adjust the stop lock so that this edge is lined up with the cut line as well. Oh, I could just do this one. Yeah, let's do that. And I'll cut all four parts. Now the ultimate test. Not too bad for my first attempt at this. So this is great for making boxes and things like that. But if I was cutting uh, like shorter miters or angles, I would use the adjustable fence feature. I already showed you guys a little bit how this one works, but let me just cut up four pieces to test how square it is. I'll cut just one more piece and I'll use this as a stop. Now I'll put this on the sled and I'll use this clamp, pull down this stop piece. That way I can butt it up against that angle over there and uh, they'll all be the same measurement. That's like perfect. I am so excited with all the different things that this sled can do. Everything that you need to build this can be found on Woodcraft's website, and I would link to everything that I use. I'll also link to my website where there's a full article and plans for you to download. Oh, before I go, I don't know if you guys know this yet, but the Builders Challenge is actually going on right now. It is a competition where people build furniture to win prizes, and it's a ton of fun, so I'll drop a link to that down below. And a huge thank you to Woodcraft for making this awesome jig hardware kit. They have a ton of other options for making jigs and everything that you need in your workshop. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next project. The only caveat with this caveat, caveat, how do you pronounce it? Caveat. Caveat. Caveat, yeah. <laughs> okay.